the war on drugs sometimes gets a bad rap because of its seeming ineffectiveness into really helping those people who have a problem. And, and the crime side is fixed, but you still have the problem. Yet another video has surfaced of uh, what we are led to believe is a parent um, who is suffering an overdose, um, unconscious seemingly in a store uh, with her daughter nearby. You guys all saw the pictures about a month ago. Um, the two people in the front seat of a car, absolutely out of it, um, apparently on their way to bring the a kid to school, the kid in the back seat in a, in a car seat. The images are, are never easy to look at, but they sure do show the seriousness of the problem that we have here in our country. Joining us on the phone, addiction specialist John Divin. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. How are you? Uh, you know, uh, this issue is something I think, you know, if you're not dealing with it in your immediate life, it's an easy one to just, you know, kind of have it out of you and, and not take seriously or do anything to stop it. But it's a it's a problem that's affecting more and more families, right? Absolutely. I mean, drug overdose is the leading cause of accidental death in the United States today. In 2014, 47,000 <laughs> 47, people died from drug overdose. Wow. So really more and wow. just increasing and increasing more and more, there isn't going to be anybody who's not touched by this. Oh and uh, I mean, I know there are so many legal implications when something like this happens, especially in the, you know, what it has to do with you not being able to care for a child that's, it's, um, you know, under your care. Um, but where do these people go from this? I mean, uh, there may be people listening to this show that think I'm just too far gone, or I don't really have a problem. I can stop whenever I want to. What are the kind of first steps, you know, in what you do that that you kind of bring up with someone like that? You know, the, the very first thing is to look at what you're giving up. What is What are you losing in your life because of your addiction? When we look at that, that picture of those parents there, it's very easy to just, to just you know, throw out, man, they're bad people. They must not care about their kids. But I've got to tell you, I've met with many, many hundreds and probably thousands of parents over the years who have, have failed as parents because they have this addiction, but they are good people, good parents, and they love their, their kids. And, and the issue is, the first question for anybody is, what are you giving up because of this addiction? What are you not able to do? And when you're not able to do things that are important to you because of the use of a drug, then that's, that is a key that something is probably happening in your brain. You might be, you might actually have the disease of addiction and diseases need health care treatment. So is it younger people, uh, middle-aged people, or is it just kind of run the, run the spectrum or run the gamut of, of different age groups? Absolutely runs the gamut. Today, there are anywhere between 5 and 10 million adults over the age of 65 who meet medical criteria for a substance use disorder. In fact, it, it, there are, are, that's one of the things that they're kind of hidden. You know, so if a 40 year old or, or a 20 year old has a drug addiction or alcoholism, you're going to see it, right? So they're going to be getting DUIs. They're not going to be showing up for work. But what happens when, when the 78 year old retiree has an addiction, nobody knows. They're suffering alone in their home. Addiction, just like every other chronic disease, does not discriminate based on age, race, gender. Uh, it's all across the board. Wow. That's, that's amazing. You know, when you talk about addiction, how, how, how do you cure it? How do you treat it? What happens? And is it a lifelong treatment? You know, there are a, a lot of different ways of looking at it, and it's kind of like saying, well, how do you, you cure cancer? Um, it, it's so complicated, and they're different for different people. But one thing I know is that when somebody becomes addicted, the brain does change in a permanent way so that they can get better, and, and in fact, they can get better than they've ever been, but they can never go back to using mood altering substances even a little bit. And and for a lot of people that requires an entire, you know, a change of a way of life. So the people who I've seen over the years, hundreds and, and even thousands of people who have freedom from addiction, it, they they constantly work on it their whole lives. It's kind of like it's kind of like getting healthy in any way, right? So if I want to lose some weight and get in good shape, I've got to eat right and I've got to work out. Um, and then if I get to that point where I'm perfectly healthy, 
if I just stop doing those things that got me healthy in the first place, I'm going to go backwards. So I think health of any kind, whether it is physical health, psychological health, emotional, spiritual health, all of these things require intentionality and daily practice. All right. Great information. Um, as always, uh, we've talked to you before. I hope to speak to you again real soon, John. We appreciate all the information. Thanks a lot.